I will forewarn you that my voice isn't going to be 100% in this video. I'm just getting over being sick, but I hope you still enjoy the story. In the late 90s in Savannah, Georgia, a man named Al Cobb purchased a Victorian bed at an auction. It was a Christmas present for his 14-year-old son named Jason who loved antiques. Three nights later, Jason was laying in the bed when suddenly from behind his head, he felt an elbow on his pillow. If that wasn't bad enough, Jason started to feel someone watching him and breathing on the back of his neck. The breath was cold and made me sick to my stomach, Jason said. The very next night, Jason noticed that a picture of his grandparents that he kept on a nightstand had been turned face down. He turned it back up and didn't think anything more of it until the next morning. He awoke to find the pitcher yet again turned over, and as before, he turned it back up again. After breakfast, Jason returned to his room. This time, the pitcher was turned over on the middle of his bed. The pitcher was also surrounded by a small stuffed zebra, a small stuffed tiger, a dinosaur made of seashells, a plaster toucan, and a conch shell. This frightened Jason enough for him to tell the rest of his family of the strange experiences. Al went to his son's room and asked, Do we have a Casper here? Tell him your name and how old you are. He then left some paper and crowns and left the room for 15 minutes. When he returned, he was surprised to find written on the paper, Danny, 7. Whenever the rest of the family was gone, Al would communicate with Danny with paper and crowns. He found out that little Phantom's mother had passed away in the bed in 1899 and that he would never leave the bed. Jason moved out of his room after he found a note that said, No one sleep in bed. Wanting to find out what would happen, he laid down and pretended to go to sleep, but nothing happened. So he got up to collect some of his clothes and was nearly hit in the head with a terracotta head that had been hanging on the wall. It flew past his head and smashed on the closet door behind him. After this, activity in the home picked up. Furniture would be moved by unseen hands. Chairs would be flipped. Candles would light by themselves. Kitchen drawers would open. The dining room table was set and strangest of all, posters were arranged to spell the name Jill and was hung up on the wall. Jason mysteriously gained mediumistic abilities and told everyone that there were more spirits in the home than Danny. These were a little girl named Gracie Watson, whose statue was in a local cemetery, Uncle Sam, who was there to get his daughter that happened to be buried under the house, and Jill, who, like Danny, liked to write notes. One of Jill's notes invited the family to a party that the family didn't know was taking place in their living room. A parapsychologist named Andrew Nichols investigated and believes the antique bed isn't the cause for the hauntings, but Jason and a badly wired wall in his room. It just so happened that the bed was put next to the wall, and this caused Jason to gain abilities. Do you believe that Danny and the other spirits are real? Or do you, like Andrew, believe that it was just Jason all along? <laughs>